Hi, Internet people. Today we're talking about something a little different, but you've already seen the title and the thumbnail, so I don't need to tell you that. We're talking about Afro-Surrealism, because it's a very, very, very interesting topic, and I do want to talk about it. Now, Afro-Surrealism, summed up in my very shitty explanation, is basically just the idea that there is a separate conceptual world that exists from us in our materialistic and our emotional. There is something more spiritual, esoteric, mytholog mythological, etc. Something other than us. It is out there. It is there. And it is particularly notable in the black experience. Hence the Afro-surrealism part. Now, I do like the way it is conceptualized in works. I had a very bad explanation of it, so I'm going to give you some examples. Sorry to bother you. A great example. You see the way that capitalism both distorts people mentally, emotionally, and physically, all while doing it under the guise of being a pretty funny movie. The idea that getting, spoilers if you haven't seen it, turned into a fucking horse is terrifying. And I mean terrifying. I mean I would never want to work for a company in advertising if I knew I was going to get turned into a horse. Next example. Nope. Now, I know what you might think. Isn't Get Out, or Us, a better example of Afro-surrealism, especially if we're going to talk about a Jordan Peele movie? And you might be right, but I don't like those two as much. I like Nope more, so we're going to talk about Nope instead. Nope is interesting because it does it in a way that isn't based off technological and or, I guess, mythological things. It's based off extraterrestrial things, which does make the surrealism a bit less, I guess, intense. It's more cosmic horror. I don't know. Afro cos cosmicism? I don't know. Some make a new word for this. Um But it's an interesting movie because it does play with a lot of the similar roles. And I like it because something like let's put it this way, right? Most people think the movie is about filmmaking. It's a critique of it almost, saying that to get these shots, to get everything you want, is is usually pretty exploitative, right? Like the whole monkey thing, you know, you know why that monkey went ape shit. It's because he was getting fucked around with too much by all the cameras and the people and the laughing, blah blah blah. But I think there's a second thing the movie's about, uh, a little bit more of an important thing in my opinion. It's about nature. It's about the primal state. Mm, importantly, it's about the defense of that status. It's about the defense of the primal natural state. And I think it's best exemplified in The Monkey. The Monkey did not want to be fucked with. The Monkey did not want to be there. The Monkey was pretty much just acting in a way that it knew would allow it to continue its existence. That was until its state of existence was fucked with too much. And then it went ballistic and got killed. And you might say, that sounds like a bad defense of this whole natural argument. But it makes more sense in the context of the alien. I don't think the alien came to Earth and Nope on purpose. I think it got left there somehow. And I think this because it stayed in one position its entire life. It didn't move. It didn't even bother really interacting with the society and inhabitants around it. It stayed there in the sky as a clout hiding for what I can only assume is years. But why did it do that? Given how it worked, it easily could have gone around the planet acting like a storm killing people, and most people wouldn't be the wiser about it, but it stayed there. And I think it stayed there because it knew it was safe there. Once it got found out, once it realized it had to act, it began to act. It began to conflict with the main roster, and I think that's because it was acting out of self-defense. Now, obviously, that's not really how the movie portrays it, but I think that's an interesting dynamic because it brings back this concept that this was something that we had no business fucking with. We as people had no business fucking with it, and I think that's a similar logic as the monkey. We had no business fucking with it. These are things that are outside of our control that we are attempting to control, and we have no control over them. And so, we get to my big, big showcase of what I think is the best Afro-surrealism. 
if you've known me for any amount of time, or you've seen the thumbnail, you already know what I'm going to say. Atlanta by Donald Glover. This show follows Earn, a guy struggling to make any sort of money, Darius, an up-and-coming Atlanta rapper, and, or not, sorry, Alfred is the up-and-coming Atlanta rapper, Darius is his friend, who doesn't really do anything. To be honest, he's kind of just a conspiracy, conspiracy theorist weirdo, but he's a Death Grips fan, so points in my book. And the entire show is just about them and the shit they get up to trying to make money. Now, could I end the explanation of the show there? Yes, yes I could. But I'd be failing to mention the parking lot that seems to be a time capsule that kidnaps people. That's pretty interesting. What's more interesting is this parking garage that kidnaps people in a time chasm or whatever opens up to a funeral home where Alfred has been following this easter egg hunt of this now deceased Atlanta rapper. And these two plots have nothing to do with each other, and I do mean nothing. I mean the entire episode. You don't know what the fuck either of these things has to do with each other. And then at the end of the show, they're like, boom, connected. Actually, they end up in the same fucking room. And you get no answers. The characters don't even get answers. The characters don't even know how this happens. And then the episode just ends. And that's, that's why I think this show is after surrealism, because they do shit like that almost every episode. There's one thing that you don't get an explanation about, and they just expect you to believe it. And I think it sums it up the best, because I think that's the way people live in society. Things happen, and we kind of just assume they're happening for some grander reason. Someone made a decision somewhere, and that's how it happened. But... No one told us that that parking garage was going to lead to that funeral. No one said that. No one knew that was going to happen because no one made that decision. That wasn't a conscious decision that some human made. It just happened. And I think, I think that that encapsulates it as best as possible. It's not even scary, really. I mean, it is. It's fucking terrifying how opening some door, I'm assuming, is cities away and ending up in a fucking funeral is pretty terrifying but it's more of fascinating to me like how does that happen randomly and I like that Afro surrealism sorry there's a thing in my eye I love that Afro surrealism deals with that question and it deals with it pretty head on to be fair there's no there's no dicking around, nothing of that shit. It gives you the question, and then it doesn't answer it. It ends before it even bothers beginning to answer. The final episode does this as well. In the final episode, Darius is tripping balls, right? And it ends on the question of, was him tripping balls real or not? Like, was the things that happened in that episode what really transpired in the world of Atlanta. But I don't think it's supposed to be contained to that episode. I think it's supposed to be about the entire show. Did these people truly change, truly become successful? Because from the outset, it really doesn't make sense how that happens, does it? They're all kind of failures to some extent, I'd say. Darius has been in the game his whole life, sure, but he's got nothing to show for it. I say Darius again? I meant Alfred. Alfred was in the game his whole life. The game, quote-unquote. Darius, being his, you know, drifting self, doesn't really try to accomplish anything, and so by the beginning of the show, he hasn't. And Ern is kind of a shitty guy, so he just doesn't have the ability to accomplish anything. He doesn't take responsibility, and he's very bad at handling himself and his money and the people around him. And we're told that these people get better at what they do. Darius, you know, he he knows how to use his, I guess, wisdom better. Alfred becomes a successful rapper, learns what it means to be a public figure, someone of importance. He deals with the ups and downs of it. Earn kind of processes his abilities to be a father, a committed partner. You know, he deals with the racism he faces in various ways. But... They never really tell you if that's the goal, you know? 
Like, the show starts, and that's the explicit goal set out by each character. Alfred wants to be famous, Darius wants to make money, Ern wants to make money and support his daughter. But beyond that, we don't know what these people want. We assume they want to be happy and live fulfilling lives, but we're making these assumptions up. And I think that the show ends the way it does because we don't really know what we assumed was going to happen by the end. We don't fucking know. We probably don't even care, to be honest, but the show goes through the effort of making us think, what if none of this happened? What if they weren't successful? And to that, we say, well, that fucking sucks. But we don't know, and that's what makes this whole surrealism part of the situation interesting, because... It's the perspective in which you view these circumstances taking place. Hence the Afro part. It's supposed to... The second part of the explanation of the term Afro-surrealism is that the surrealism that's taking place, this otherworldly shit, is supposed to be through the lens of the black experience. And in America, if you didn't know, it's kind of ass. It's kind of shitty. It's kind of the worst thing possible. And... Because of that, because the experience that it is trying to emulate, trying to depict, is so fucking bad. I mean, seriously, some of the shit that happens in that show is fucked. And it's not even the worst of the shit that happens in real life. Like, white supremacy has truly eviscerated every other race down to their core, like, I don't have a better way to encapsulate it other than I'm native. And I do not like that sometimes. <laughs> that was a joke. I like being native. Most of the time. Sometimes, though. I wish this country burned. But that's on the internet, you know? Um, no. I think it does it in a fabulous way. I think the separation between reality and mysticism is very interesting. I love that the explanations are not given. And I like that Afro-surrealism as a concept is much more concrete than it was a few years ago. I hope it expands more, and as much as I'd like to talk about Afrofuturism, I'm just not that red on it. Surrealism, Afro-surrealism, is a visual medium, you know, for the most part. And I'm much more interested in that. I like my visual arts. I'm a movie, TV kind of person. That's just what I do. So, yeah, there you go. There's me ranting about Afro-surrealism for some amount of time. Oh yeah, and I finished my AA. I have an associate's degree. Bye, fuckers.